Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. We are in the playoff stage of the tournament. We're about to kick off the first semi-final best of three between Cloud9 and Fnatic. And I am once again joined by Delicious Danishes, off to Fisho and Froggen. We will chat about the matchup in just a second. We do need to get through just a few reminders. For everybody at home, social media is still running. Facebook.com slash IEM. Twitter, use that hashtag IEM. And also, if you head over to ESLgaming.com, click on the Katowice link, you will also find out the nominations for some of the MVPs. We will be running that one over the course of today and tomorrow, so make sure you drop by and vote for who you feel deserves to be crowned that MVP. Right now, I would like to look at the playoff bracket and just remind everybody at home who the top four teams are right now. The top of the bracket, it is the KT Rolster Bullets. Then we'll be playing against Gambit as our next semi-final. Right now, it's gonna be Fnatic versus Cloud9. Now, because this is semi-finals, it is best of three. The way that it will work in this matchup, Cloud9 is blue side. The next game, Fnatic will be blue side. And the team that wins the game in the shortest time will then get the choice for game three of which side they prefer. So there's a little bit of a added strategic depth to this one. LCS teams, LCS playoff for pride, EU versus NA. What is the biggest thing we need to look for when we look at this matchup? Froggen, what's your thoughts? Um, personally, I think the mid lane. Because Xpega has been struggling in the mid lane against all the mid lanes he's been playing against. Meanwhile, Hai has been looking really, really strong in the mid lane. So I think maybe if it goes into a game three, make Fnatic get the purple side if they can't decide, so he can counter pick in the mid lane. I think it's really important they save the mid pick to last. If it's not going to be a Lulu or something else that's like really versatile and really strong and can't be countered in mid. For me, I think jungle wise should be the matchup to watch. Uh, both junglers have been very, very strong. Very good ganks early on. We've seen them actually do well in team fights. Medius, double on the Kha'Zix. A little bit slow early game, but he's still there with the ganks, always forcing summoners. And then once he gets the items, he gets into the team fights, he always picks up kills and everything for his team. And then Sanat, of course, he's just, he's Sanat. He's always there. You can always count on Sanat to do well. You can always count on him with the ganks, and of course, when it comes to getting dragons and barons, his smites are on point. So for me, the two junglers will pretty much decide the game, actually. Whoever has the best game, if one is very early game based and he can actually get his team ahead, or the other one is late game based, like Kha'Zix, let's see who actually can carry the most. Top lane is also going to be very interesting, just because Source, we saw him on the AP Championships. He didn't do too well, and he's known for loving to play those, and not so much the bruisers. Boss has been doing absolutely fantastic on the bruisers. Both on Shivana, I think he played, and he played Renekton in the other game. So if he goes for like a scaling champion like Shivana, we could possibly see Source bringing out one of those AP champions because he loves to play them against Shivana. Just to, just to interject before we carry on. So we got mid lane is important, jungle is important, top lane is important. I'm starting to get a bit of a trend here. We'll carry on talking about I the lanes. I think we can agree on mid lane and jungle for us are the and most top important. And no, top is also important. <laughs> just slightly under the rest. Let's bring up those team sheets for everybody at home. As we have already said, Cloud9 are on the blue side, so they're in their home colors. Balls, Meteos, High, Sneaky, and Lemonation. We're about to get Fnatic up as well in just a moment. They will be red side for this particular battle. And it is, of course, going to be Soaz Top, Cyanide, Peke, Reckless, and Yellow Star. So we've gone through every lane so far. Let's go with the duo lane of Reckless and uh, Yellow Star going up against Sneaky Elimination. This is one that has been interesting because Sneaky Elimination have really impressed me this weekend. I was worried about them going into matchups against the likes of Wei Zhao, for example, and they didn't falter. They had absolutely no problems in lane. Are they going to have the same, I don't want to say easy lane, but the same control against Reckless and Yellow Star who are much more versed in their playstyle? I think a lot of uh, Cloud9 bot lanes credit Obviously, it's on them, but as a team, the things they're doing early on to actually help them get a lead. You often see Meteors coming down early with a very, you know, like level 3, level 4 gank onto the enemy bot lane, force a summoner, give a little edge to the bot lane from Cloud9, which is always very focused on good poke and obviously, in general, just very safe lanes. You have the Morgana Civil lane, it's pretty much impossible to dive it. You have the Syra Caitlyn lane, a long range poke thing that's actually supposed to win the laning phase. So, what I, I like the way they play it. And yeah, Sneaky and Elimination, not to take any, anything away from them, they have been playing absolutely fantastic, just those two. But the rest of Cloud9 and the picks really helped them out as well. So I see it more like, okay, so we see C9, C9 they have picking somewhat weak bottom lanes. We saw the Civi, we saw the Civi and Morgana coming Disagree. out. Disagree. 
you can counter it with like picking something like any and Lucian that should basically like at least win the lane early game. And if like as long as Fnatic is aware of Meteor's ganks, I think they might be struggling in the CS with the CSing. Well, I do know that the team's already on stage. We will have to save this argument for just a little bit. 100% disagree being a weak lane. Before we go on, we will get back to this argument in the post game. We do have a best of three series. I want to hear your predictions, then we will find out the public vote. So, Deficio, Fnatic or Cloud9? EU or NA, who is going to win? First game or the entire series? The entire series. I have to give it to Cloud9, to be honest. They looked so strong yesterday. The rotations, one to get into the mid game, are so good. And yeah, Fnatic haven't been impressive early game for me, or at least not good enough to actually beat out Cloud9 and just snowball against them. And Froggen? I think Fnatic is going to win. If, like, Fnatic, they usually play really, really well on the matches that actually count. We have seen all of them pretty much stepping up in the last game against IG. So I think if they just keep it going, I think they can win. Well, once again, split decision here on the analyst desk. You guys at home have been voting on eslgaming.com, and 54% of you are in favor of Fnatic. I think that is about as close as you're going to cut it. Yeah. I think I'm sliding a little more with Cloud9 based on how well they played yesterday. Remember, this is the third time we've seen these teams in a best of three series. We've seen them at Worlds, we've seen them at Battle of Atlantic, and now we're going to see them here at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. Sharks, let's introduce the teams and get the series underway. Thank you very much, Quickshot. I am myself very excited for this matchup. So let's introduce the teams here on stage. First up, on the blue side, from North America, they absolutely dominated on day one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Cloud9. <laughs> Guys, you can come over here. <laughs> Gotta show yourself to the crowd. And on the red side, not starting off very well yesterday, but fighting their way back from the lower bracket. Give it up for Fnatic! I can just feel the tension between these two teams. It's got to be a fantastic best of three. So, Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Shots. And it's semi-final time, so we brought our resident North American Belgian into the fold of things. Crepo, you've probably got more experience with Cloud9 than, well, certainly me and Demon, that's for sure. Uh, how are you expecting them to do here against Fnatic? Very strong teams. <laughs> and Cloud9, initially I would have said, like, I'm not sure, but right now I feel they're almost an edge up on Fnatic. Sure, uh, Fnatic looked uh, better than they did yesterday, but Cloud9 didn't even need to look better because they already looked so great yesterday. Um, Balls is so solid, so solid in the top lane, and so was, has been shaky. He has these good games, these bad games, but earlier today he was playing a losing matchup and he got saved by uh, Cyanide, putting on his carry pants there. But I feel Medias is going to read into that and I might be able to counter that, so. I'm just really excited to see what happens. As am I, because this is the semi-finals time. This is the time to shine. It's Europe versus North America, and it is going to be a great game. Medios there, he's turned up without his highlights. That caught a lot of people off guard, that's for sure. But he has been playing fantastic. And Fnatic have got to make sure they don't lose it in the lane phase. That's something they've been struggling with. Now, ironically, it's something that Gambit was struggling with as well. Both European teams that have got through so far have struggled in that Europe lane phase. Cloud9 against TPA demolished them. TPA were not in that game at all. And you could say the same against WE as well. So Cloud9 really are probably the most on form team here right now. Yeah, they've been playing solid all around. Even in the, in the NALCS, they've been playing pretty consistently. Yeah, they had a game here and there that they uh, didn't dominate as hard as they did last season. But it's, it's, hard, it's really hard to top that 25 and 3 from last season. But right now, they're still doing great. Um, I really like the, the, how solid their Botlane has been playing. A lot of people were doubting them earlier, but they, they showed up to this tournament. And it just shows that Cloud9 is not only an LCS team, but they thrive in, in these offline events, especially given the fact that they came out of here. They boot camped. They made sure jet lag could not be an excuse. Uh, they got used to the surroundings. 
And so, yeah, they're ready. Where do, where do you see the picks and bans going? Because we've seen Meteors, he's been getting the Kazakhs through. Do we see that as ban worthy? Because, he, I mean, you, you talked about it yourself the other day. Meteors can play a lot of champions. If he wants to learn a champion, he'll just sit and play it and play it and play it until he's basically brilliant at it. See, I think Elise is going to be super contested. Both mm. both junglers do really well with her. Especially Cyanide's bouncing off a win right now uh, with Elise. So that that's definitely... You got to know, you break short-term comfort. You know, they did well with these champions the last game. And you really got to look at that. Because a lot of teams end up like carrying that over. Then on top lane, I feel Renekton is, uh, is going to be the pick. Baal's is, is fine dealing with Renekton. But whenever he gets Renekton, he just wins his lane guaranteed almost. And then just snowballs to the other lanes. As for high and Peke... Um, I'm not so sure, honestly. I think I'd, I'd like to see Pekka resort to the more ranged casters again. Uh, High does play a couple of those uh, those assassin picks. Why I like the Kha'Zix pick you mentioned earlier is because it can go both ways. They can pick it early and he can High can still play it mid and they can still put it in the jungle and it's a little ambiguous. And even though they're on blue side, they might end up kind of picking one more pick than they traditionally would do. What about the bot lane then? Because we mentioned already that Sneaky and Lemon Nation have been very, very solid. We Saw him play Zyra yesterday, Lemon Nation. Not a fan. Is that it, not a fan? And we heard that from quite a few people as well. Are we going to see that again? Is that realistic? Yeah, and you've also got the Morgana. I mean, Yellow Star played yeah. it this morning, Lemon Nation played it yesterday. You it's going to be a contested They pick. can't surprise each other with Morg, though. That's the thing. Yeah. They've been playing all these lanes that Morg has been doing really well in. Uh, let's be honest, the oppo opposition just wasn't ready for it. Um, as a Morgana player myself, I could, I could definitely see the enemy uh, bot lanes not knowing when or how to capitalize on this. And I'm pretty damn sure both Thief teams know how to do that. So um, on the topic of support, so I, maybe they go for the route where you bat out a few and you pick what uh, you pick one of them. And then you say, like, well, if you want a good support, there's only pretty much one left. And then you play into the enemy team's hands. And let's see if they react to that. I'm not really sure what the ban strategy is. I don't think any team can completely outban anybody else, um, both composition-wise and single-player-wise. Yeah, if you hit the jungle, both of them have a big pool. If you hit mid, you can't hit. AD carries maybe, get Rekka's off solution. He seems to be doing really well on it. And um, Sneaky likes to default to Sivir more than Rekka's would, from my like limited understanding so far. Um, so maybe maybe that's something. Get Rekka's off his comfort AD picks, play the Sivir and force him onto uh, something else. Because imagine Lucian, Caitlyn banned, Sivir taken by one side. What's there left to play if you're not Genja? <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. It's an early morning for High, it seems. Every time I see him on screen, he's yawning. Him with the North American LCS, yes, but you guys do play pretty early in the morning over in North America. Yeah, we have to wake up relatively. What, what is in early. this book? This lemonade, this is the book we all see. This is the tactics book. He's like, quick, as soon as the camera's moving in, he quickly shuts it down there. It's, it's, it's a lot of it's, sword knowledge. It's his tips of how to how grow, to grow a beard. magnificent <laughs> beard. I need that book. Pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Left you hanging on that one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Crepo beard is something we want to see. But we're going to get into the bands and the picks and find out exactly what Cloud9 and Fnatic are going to bring to the table here in the first semi final of the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship. And as we can see, Lucian, you called that one, take it away from Reckless. Cassidy, you never want to give Peke a Cassidy. I forgot to talk about Cassidy and I shame myself because this is like the champion that defines this matchup for both sides. Mm. What? We've seen Peke on Cassidy so far this event. Can we can we judge him from his no. Cassidy performance against Yasuo in game number I, one? I honestly don't think either of them would have picked it. I you don't mean, think it, I don't think that was banworthy. You got you got you got crit twice though. You have to remember Peke got crit twice on that all in, which was mm. uh, I believe a ten percent chance, two times in a row. Uh, given my math, not too likely. Anyways, I feel given the history both these teams have, if one of them, imagine, if one of them ends up winning or losing with Cassidy, with Cassidy yeah. do you want that? Do you want that out there in, in, no. in social media? Why not just ban it away and be like, guys, let's, if we're confident we can beat them, let's do it without the Cassidy, because it would just stir up such a fuss. Um, but it would be interesting, to say the least. Well, let's see Trunnel taken away here for the top lane. And Elise, you talked about that one earlier, both Meteos and Cyanide, fans of that one. Lulu removed as well as Caitlyn. First pick was the Sivir. So yeah, this could be a, a strategy to say like, okay, we ban on Caitlyn, which means there's Sivir on the left. Take the Sivir. We're forcing you to take the Sivir because we want Renekton and whatever was left, LeBlanc, for example, instead. That means Reckles probably has an answer because you know they're going to probably take Sivir. Lucian's out. You're, you're banning your own champion yourself. And then you, you basically force them, sure, you get Sivir first pick, but you're giving up two more priority picks, uh, as in Renekton and LeBlanc. And that could really work out. Um, I could see a Zed going on high, or a Kha'Zix, to maybe fight that LeBlanc. 
uh, assassin against assassin. Maybe the long range champion, but then with barrier, removing the kill pressure there. I mean, it, it's interesting to see the Sivir being the first pick, because I know for a fact, I mean, that's not something Fnatic would go for at all as their first pick when the likes of Renekton are on the table. We've seen the Chinese team, of course, valuing it so highly. KTB also valued it very highly. It's, it's interesting that they choose to use that important first pick for that AD carry. But you can't bank on that. If this was Fnatic on boost side, maybe, but mm. Fnatic has two picks. Yeah. And normally, I, I would agree, like, Fnatic would not go for that, but... Lucian and Caitlyn are already out. Like, what is left? I'm still wondering what Reckless is going to place. Is it going to be a Varus or... Yeah, Could what be else? Jinx or Reckless. Jinx, yeah, but then they need the Morgana. I think Jinx Morgana is a really good answer here. Uh, I like it. Although it's pretty hard to catch Sivir with Morg because uh, you can run out of your ulti so quick and they have a spell shield. But as for a lane goes, I feel Jinx Morg can really punish uh, Sivir Thresh. Well, we do see that Lee Sin here for Meteos and the Thresh coming in there as well for Lemon Nation. Yeah, default to Lee pick. Um, he's been playing a lot of Elise and a lot of Lee Sin, and he generally people just don't have the room or space, so he keeps going back to his two or three champions, and he does so well. I really like how like, the progress he made because you have you have great players, right, on a couple of champions, and they're known for that L on this. A couple of months ago, Medius was not known for Lee Sin, and he was quoting himself like terrible on the champion, and then I watched him play, and it was, the basics was right, you know the. Conceptual play was good, but the mechanics he had to work on. And now he's, he's in second, kick flashing, uh, doing everything right. Oh, Pantheon's still Pantheon open. Pantheon yeah, was like still that. open. And that's a champion that has been running heavily in Europe and North America as well. But the Zyra pickup for Yellowstar, this is a champion he played a lot of during the world, but we saw it yesterday from Lemonation. It was not convincing. All right, let's speak in Zyra's favor. Why would you pick Zyra here? Um, disengage. Silver teams are going to charge in. Lee Sin is going to close the gap on you if you pop a Zyra ulti either yeah. on him or in between. This is, even if they don't get hit, they get zoned. Like, they're gonna, the team fight is going to split in two sides and then you hopefully want to kill somebody. However, my, whenever I play Zyra, um, I just get blown up a lot. And I talked to Kana <laughs> yesterday, he's like, uh, I don't like the Zyra pick. He's like, yeah, but you didn't see Lemon really get used of the, the great Zyra passive as much as he usually does. So even they know that, that Zyra blowing up and only being used for two damage is a bit of a farce already. Yeah. So yeah, not a big fan of the champion. Especially against like Gragas, it's two battles and you're gone. Well, speaking of Gregor's picked in there for high and also taking Shivani here for balls in that top lane. We saw yesterday against uh, TPA exactly how good he is with that Shivana. Yeah, this is almost a standard answer is you want to play Renekton into Shivana because Renekton is good against Shivana early. But at the same time, you want to pick Shivana into Renekton because Shivana so. is good late. That's where I thought I was thinking Reckless may well go with that vein. It's available. The only real hard counter is the Annie. Which is called the no, Candy I Banner. Is a, I think this is a really good pick. I uh, completely forgot about Vayne existing even. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good thing you thought it was coming at least. It's uh, something we've seen yeah, pretty yeah. fiercely with Candy I think Banner, it's a really course, good pick. I think Vayne works well against Sivir. I uh, can dodge Boomerang Blade. If not the first take, the second take for sure. You can go all in. Um, Vayne ulti creates a little confusion. Top a Zyra ulti with that and then she can have these extended fights and that might work. Does the Grasping Root work with the Kandem? I can never remember. What do you mean, like the, the stun? The it stun? doesn't have the stun effect afterwards, does it? It's, mm. it's, it's not, no. I don't think no, so. I don't, it just depends how they use it in what combo. I think mm. generally you want to keep them in place with Zyra, so Vayne can reposition for a Condemn, and that's the way that the combo is going to work. Yeah. And Zyra just offers a lot of ranged poke to keep them at bay from going too close to the Vayne. However, if Zyra misses one snare, that invites the, the Cloud9 team to just bypass her completely and, and go for the Vayne. You see the trophy there on the middle of the stage, both these teams. Almost there, semi-final stage. Best of three, of course, if you just join us for this one. We've moved out of that best of one group stage and see exactly how <laughs> these two teams are going to go into it. Fans getting handsy there, I believe, as uh, the pictures were being taken. Carmack and Shocks both getting their Can photos you play taken. Him? Pretty sure I know which one they're trying to get handsy with, but... Uh, Carmack, obviously. Obviously Carmack, of course. He just judo hip-tossed them into the, uh, the pit <laughs> that is between the crowd and the uh, stage. There is a giant hole between these two. Nobody's going to get stage dive, that's for sure. As it stands though, Fnatic versus Cloud9 is about to get underway. North America, if you've just woken up, you're thinking, what the hell? How are Fnatic in the semi-finals? Well, they played magnificently this morning against Invictus Gaming. They definitely turned itself around, and Gambit have also turned it around. They're also in the semi-finals, but right now, it's the battle. North America versus Europe, again. As well, we should uh, really We've talk seen this about before. this one. We have seen this matchup before. We'll see exactly how it, this one goes down. And I'm going to ask you for, for predictions here because we've not really done that. We've left that to the 
other beautiful guys over there on the analysis desk, apart from Deficio's not so beautiful, uh, except when he pouts, which he does quite a lot, if you've noticed that. Kabo, best of three, who's going to take it? Um, I've, again, on the, on the best of three, I have no idea. All I can look at is what I have in front of me this game, and it's still not very decided. I like the fact that Cloud9 scales pretty well. Um, I like Shivana scaling. I'm a bit worried. Renekton, uh, Pantheon can shut down on Shivana in the early game. Uh, not too much crowd control effects coming out of the Cloud9 lineup either. Uh, a lot of dispersion, but not really target CC. And if Fnatic is really uh, moving across the battlefield well themselves, they'll have a, a lot better grasp of, of winning these team fights. However, Fnatic's a bit all over the place. You have the Renekton on one side. Pantheon for team fights kind of wants to jump in and just burst somebody, but then in these long drawn out team fights, Fnatic needs to blow up some members really quick or they're in a lot of trouble because their sustained DPS just isn't very high. So opening items, we can see Spell Thief's Edge for Yellow Star. Does find high in the tri bush down that bottom ledge. Just a little juke back and forward to hit. And actually, ironically, that would have given gold to Yellow Star. So he's already looking good in lane. Yep, already got himself five gold. Five gold. Every, every little attack so far until he upgrades and gets that ten gold. Yes. Yep. That puts Fnatic ahead. Already. Yeah, already, definitely. The Spell Thieves definitely is a, is a good pickup for Zyra, though. Ranged Poke gets amplified. That's why she came back uh, into favor before that really didn't really happen. And you see them facing on bottom, and they just want to race to level 2. So we're probably starting W here. Yep. And they just want to hit the 2 first and then go for a trade. So down in this bottom lane, Siva Thresh versus Zyra Bane. Nice to see Zyra really coming back into things. You've seen less and less Zyra, of course. But is it because of the change to the spell thieves that makes Zyra a little bit more yeah, exactly. viable that, again? That's all it is, because Zyra range pokes really well, and that's what gets rewarded by the spell thieves so much. Um, I'm still not. There's a reason people didn't play her before, and I feel spell thief doesn't really solve it. Uh, in the middle, meanwhile, Hai is, is doing a really good job on his barrels. Uh, already made Pekka use his passive, and he's, he's putting the pressure on his lane. So we'll see how that one all works out. Whether Pekka can. Get himself some kills built up on this LeBlanc. Both of them starting out with that door and Tring. We did see that Peke used his potion a little bit earlier on just to uh, heal up that damage that was done by High's Barrels before. Uh, it's Cyanide in the jungle playing the Pantheon. And we've seen, I think, conflicting performances so far this season in the LCS from Cyanide. Had some good times on Pantheon, but also had some times where he just didn't have the impact that I feel that Cyanide needs in Fnatic to, to get them on the game. I was interested. He didn't go with Wukong. That's, that's the champion I would have thought he would have gone with. That's the champion that's worked for him in the European LCS. Instead, sticks with the Pantheon. Pantheon has been making some great plays, both in North America and Europe. So both teams are well aware of what they're in for here. I really think Pantheon is the better choice against the Lee Sin, because if, uh, if the Lee Sin comes in and you have Wukong, you're notoriously weak in early game. Lee Sin is going to punish that. Even in fights, you're going to get kicked out. Pantheon needs to help snowball that Renekton lane, look for a dive on level 4. You always see Meteos pacing around the top lane. Not because um, he wants to gank there necessarily, but he needs to be ready in case Pantheon shows up. If he doesn't, then we're going to need to look later what's going to happen. Um, Cyanide's probably going to try and sneak a gank around mid, then scale, and then look to just man bomb some of the couple lanes and get man some kills. Bomb. Man bomb. That's man, man drop. Bomb. I haven't heard man bomb. Man drop is the, is the phrase the we kill turning go with, but man, man bomb. bomb. Could well work. <laughs> we'll see how that one goes. Peke out farming so far in that mid lane up against Ty. That's impressive as the LeBlanc keeping that going and Reckless keeping very much even with Sneaky. Yeah, look at bottom though. The, the position that Lemon is in gives away that they have no idea where Cyanide is right now. He's giving a lot of respect to possible jungle pressure, uh, which means Reckless can just farm from out of the brush all the way in the front. He was standing all the way back ready with a lantern. You'll see that shift immediately once they pick up where oh. he is. Ah, he's dead. And High's dead. <laughs> yeah. And uh, here I am talking we, about bot lane. Yeah, we almost <laughs> missed that one. High going down to Peke for the first blood. A simple one versus one. And you can't really let that happen. You can't let Peke get going on this LeBlanc. All right, so Pantheon. Pantheon shows mid to push up mid afterwards. Lee Sin could have went to the hold, but they send Gragas. Instead, Meteos wants to capitalize on this. They have information, and they can't They can lo They can't be sad about like losing their mid lane. They have to react immediately. And Meteos is trying to get a gank bottom, but they seem to smell it because Meteos did not show up mid to get that farm. Top's ungankable. The only place Meteos can be is his jungle or bot lane. So we see Peke go back and you can see the item advantage already gained there. The codex being picked up against those two Doran's Blade. This is it. It's going to be a simple burst, surely. That's very well played. And that's it. Yeah, well, I mean, he was not getting out of that one. We'd already seen him being poked fairly low. And that was just, I mean, like you say, very well played. And 
That's dangerous times because LeBlanc is one of those champions you do not want to give kills to. And a straight up 1v1 without any jungle involvement, that's a bad play by High. And I have to respect what Fnatic bottom lane did as well. They didn't know where Meteos was, but you saw they just based the turret and they told them, well, I'm calling your bluff right now. If you guys want to try and hold the lane there to gank me, sure, I'll just base and get some more items. And then when I come back, I'll 2v2 you anyways. So Fnatic gaining the early lead in this one. 500 gold, the advantage. And are they thinking about the dragon here? Or are they going to go down towards this bottom lane? Actually, Cyanide with Pantheon it is very, very early on. Six minutes in only. Level five already, though, is Cyanide. That's a good a good way on towards the man bomb, as yeah. you call it. The reason the reason they went for the possible Drake is because they know, like, we based already on bottom. They still have to base. There'll be a small gap there. Pantheon's passive blocks, an all attack once in a while, a Drake shot. Cyrus plants, eat up a lot of damage. So you don't need to do, like, the Mad Life esque juking back and forth. You can just burn that Drake as quick as you can. But they weren't as confident. They didn't know, didn't know exactly where people were, and listening over the wall could steal it. Lemonation. Sorry, not Lemonation. It was Meteos that's sneaking around the side there. They had vision of Cyanide a moment ago because that Ping Ward's still in that bush. Keep our eye on that one, by the way, because against TPA, Cloud9 kept a ward there for a good 25 minutes. From minute five until the end of the game, that didn't get touched out, that ward. So Cloud9 doing the same this time around in that bottom lane. We'll see if anyone passes through it. And actually, when you think about it from Cyanide's point of view, it's not really something he's going to be doing. He's going to be looking to jump rather than just simply walk into the lane. Explosive cask missing Peke there. That's not good play. Uh, too much drunken rage before he threw that one, I think. <laughs> and, uh, not quite landing there, although we are going to see the grassy root coming down. Actually, Cyanide facing a bit of pressure here in the jungle. Meteos does land the Q, blocks out there from Cyanide, who returns a little bit more damage. But we're going to see them fighting over the blue buff. Four man invade here. Where are they going to go? Are they going to transition towards the dragon? Fnatic are close by and all ready and waiting to go for this one. Using that lantern to pull Meteos closer and then keeping that pressure on towards that blue buff. It is going to be up in a moment, but Fnatic are not going to let this one slide He's easily. Done, this is a signature Cloud9 move from four man invade on the blue buff. Meteos gets first out though. Yeah, actually, gonna have to flash over the top there. That was a, an interesting one as that blue buff is starting up. Lemon Nation going pretty low there. Is oh, Peke diving in, missing in there. Peke has to go back there up towards his W. The Knight was actually down. Peke may be able to escape from this one. A lot of damage Ooh. coming in. And in the end, does manage to get away, but the Ignite's coming down. Oh, oh, one more tick, one of Seven hit points. Incredible. So close. Seven hit points. But Cloud9 are turning this. They're going to rush in towards that mid turret. Yellow Star is there to keep them up. Hey, while that was all happening, Reckless stayed in the bottom lane. He could have got involved and they maybe could have got kills, but that's going to be a blue ball for Cloud9. Okay, so this play happened over a minute long. There's so many aspects to analyze right here. Okay, signature move Cloud9. Level 6, mid lane jungler. What do we do? We move in for a blue buff. How do we poke our lane down in the middle? That was that cast. We get him low and we challenge that blue buff. Good beat by Fnatic. Didn't greet in, just walked in, kept him off as long as they could. In the meanwhile, their AD carry is farming in the bottom. Rightfully so. They end up losing the blue buff only because they had a little bit of a bad trade. I uh, would expect it going in there. And I really like what Hyde did there in the end. He flashed just to apply the ignite. Uh, this in turn, because the play lasted so long, they base, and this leads to a dragon. This leads to a dragon for Fnatic, a big advantage. And you know, I think a blue buff for a simple dragon, not a bad objective chain trade, I think. I think they'll take that one, Fnatic. And that puts them a nice 1,500 gold in the lead here. Fnatic looking pretty damn strong here at the start. Although we have to say, Reckless again, being out farmed in this bottom lane. And again, we have to give props to Sneaky and Lemon Nation, who throughout these games so far, throughout yesterday, and and looking the same today here. That bomb lane uh -oh. has been very strong. There's a barrel coming in. Cyanide gets hit by the second. Peke comes across. Play comes in. Cyanide going low. <laughs> but the stun comes on towards high. Can they land in on the Q? Cyanide, Peke is going to actually have to take that Q there. Cyanide walks away. And because Cyanide lost his blue buff, he's still level 5 right now. And this is Cloud9 capitalizing on the fact that Fnatic did that Drake again. You know, it's, it's going in turn and very good reactive plays. Okay, we lose our blue buff. What do we do? We use their base timings to get that Drake. They just got Drake. They weren't on the lanes. What do we do? We try to collapse them when they go into our jungle. A little bit overplayed by Fnatic. I think they shouldn't be in that jungle. Quick counter as well from Cloud9. They realize that 
Of course, Cyanide is going to have to go back. Medios comes up there straight for that red buff. Soaz is going to try and counter it. They also have High coming up here. Soaz has got to back away from this one. He's in trouble. He's going to get taken down, maybe. Balls goes deep. This is going to be Soaz going down. Flashes oh. through it. Dominus on towards it. Oh. Has not got the ignite to go down. Now look at the jungle. Yellow Star comes in there. He catches off. Becky comes Big to counter it. They have to back away. It's still a 2v3 situation. And Fnatic, well, they did a good defense job. But Medios is back there. Cyanide's managed to come back full health. He's going to try for the smite. Still. He has to get his, he's still level 5. If he doesn't get this, he's going to be really far behind, and he doesn't. S a level 7 Meteos against level 5 Cyanide. Oh, Raven Nation actually taking a lot of damage, but Yellow Star blown to pieces. A sneaky comes around the side. Peke has to back off again. Has no mana to really get involved with that one. And that will be the first kill of the game going over to Cloud9. They've got three men in middle as well. They might be able to do some good turret damage. Yeah, it's a good counter. And Cloud9 are going to turn this damage into a tower because Fnatic can't defend this one. Peke's got zero mana. He can't come and defend this one. Cyanide's still at level 5, as you mentioned. That is great play from Cloud9. So if you're watching this game, you would expect Cloud9 to be at least a couple of thousand gold ahead, given how much pressure they're exerting. And the reason they're not is because in the bot lane, the invisible AD carry Reckles is just farming all game. So Fnatic is just trying to last and hold down until he gets fed. But I'm not sure if that's the right play with, with this much of a, a non-scaling lineup. Pantheon needs to get strong and Snowball, or Blanc needs to get strong and Snowball. Renekton will fall off in the mid game, so Cloud9 is playing their composition correct. Fnatic here putting some pressure back in that mid lane now and in fact that turret may just well go down. Meteos is off doing his raids at this point but he's not going to be able to come across to save this one. Fnatic picking up their first tower of the game. Tizers on turrets overall. Meanwhile Soas feeling a bit of pressure now on this top side. Sunfire Cape almost done for balls. There is High to join in as well. Take a look at the CS though. In, in this Shivana Renekton matchup, an only 10 or 9 CS uh, uh, difference is not what you would expect and not what we saw earlier today. Even given ganks on, 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 the, on the side of the Shivana, the Renekton still was like 60 CS up. So that's definitely indicating how solid of a top laner Balls is. But you gotta think surely that's down to the pressure that Meteos has been putting on. Cyanide has not been able to make any effect in this game so far because he's been so pressured by Meteos, so consequently Soas has having to play so defensive in that top lane. Yeah, but Meteos wasn't ever around top lane either, and at the same time, in a straight 1v1 matchup, I think Balls did really well staying even on CS, and it's a tiny bit surprising to me. What is surprising is the fact that Vayne, Reckless, is keeping up in farm. We do see Sneaky's gone back to get that Bloodthirster, but this this would be a big bonus and a big problem for them. We see Soas though, it's going to be the tower in the top lane because Balls has backed away. That's two to one in favor of Fnatic. And they keep the pressure on, even though they, they seemingly get behind and they lose their buffs, they keep the pressure going. 2,000 gold is the lead that Fnatic have right now. And how Cyanide really been able to get involved is behind him farming. Ooh. Not really have the pressure that he wants. Meteos waiting off in the tribush there. He's a pink ward as well, so he knows that he's not going to be spotted. And Yellow Star is going to basically have to be the disengage here as we do see the ultimate pop from Sneaky. There's a flash away from the Q. The hook goes wide as well. Great counter play. Fnatic read that one. Was on the hunt use. It did burn a flash for Fnatic, but I think they'll take that one. It was a flash for Yellow Star. And they do have Cyanide still nearby. He is level 6 now. He has that man drop. The blue buff's going to go across the Peke, but Cloud9, they're going to continue pushing this one. Yep, and I think that They've done so well here to be rotating around on towards these towers. Vayne is a mile away now from this turret. So this is going to be going down in favor of Cloud9. Their second one of the game. Balls is meanwhile pressuring that top lane as well. That turret is also down to below half HP. See, I want to see how Cloud9 capitalizes even on, on somewhat of their own mistakes. I think that on the hunt wasn't ideally used. But you know, it failed. We got a flash. What do we do? Don't go back into your jungle. Immediately group up. Pressure this tower. Once it goes down, pressure a little more. And then you have the chance to rotate mid. If not, keep rotating between the lanes and get vision control. And it, they basically force Fnatic back. And eventually they will go for the Drake. Oh, that's a mistake. They don't want to go for this man drop. They're going to get in there. They've landed on high. The combo does come in there. The least lands. But look at the destruction that came out onto Cyanide. He was dropped where he stood. And this is ties in with the point I made regarding vision control. They had no idea exactly where Meteos was. He was waiting in the wings. Just look at how many wards Cloud9 has and how they combo that. Both with defensive line of pink wards combined with a like one line further aggressive line of green wards. And it's there in total vision control. Even though they're behind, they're controlling this map so well and it allows them to rotate as well as they usually do and if he carries on like this i 
I have the feeling they're not going to be behind for too much longer. We see their Reckless continuing to farm things up. We've got five seconds until that Dragon comes into play. And Cloud9 already in position from that one. Reckless and Yellowstar are the only two oh. really near. Cyanide is coming down. They're going towards Reckless. Condemned comes down. There's a flash away from Reckless. Meanwhile, the Ultimate does come out of Yellowstar, but he's going to get caught out. Sneaky picks himself up a kill. We do see Peke going in on towards Meteos. Is he going to get the kill? Yes, he is. Ignite finishes that one off. They're going on towards Sneaky as well. They pick up that one. Cyanide gets the kill. Now Lemon Nation's all alone. This is going to be another one. Double kill for Peke. They're going to get the Dragon as well. And see, I would almost feel that this is part of Soas's uh, roam down the bottom. They had the information Shivana stay top, and this is Cloud9 overplaying their hand. And Fnatic saying, Well, you're overplaying it. I will call your bluff right now. Even though it looked like Yellowstar got caught, he was basically doing what Gambit does as well. They bait them into an area. Sure, you're killing my support, but you'll get in range of all my carries collapsing down on you. And we know if this fight drags out, Renekton will join so much sooner than Shivana ever can. So we get kills and a Drake for a tower, and Fnatic takes the right trade here, and Cloud9 kind of got a little greedy. That was such clear focus as well. Reckless went straight for Sneaky. Didn't care. There was a kill to be had at the side. Peke had already called it. He knew it was going to go down. Went straight in towards Siva, and Siva had no answer for Reckless there whatsoever. Top tower did go down, though, so still tower advantage to Cloud9. But the gold is still in Fnatic's hands, and this game is wide open right now. Explosive cast being used on Yellowstar. He's going to turn his back around on Grasping Root. Peke is there. He does manage to land the leash. That's going to get the stun, but those barrels are starting to hurt. Yeah, they certainly are. Athene's on Holy Grail. Double door and drink is what they have currently with high as that red buff is going to be kicked off here and stolen away by Cloud9. And it is in fact Balls that does get that one. Deathfire Grass was just picked up by Peke. Reckless keeping the damage on towards Balls. He's not going to let him keep in that free farm in the top lane. This is something Balls does tend to do. The rest of the team will keep pressure, but he will keep that wave pressure on towards that top tower. However, Soaz has been doing a fantastic job. He went down the bottom and he's completely massacred that wave, pushed it right up for Fnatic. So I think what Balz does is really good as a top lane in Shivana. This is what you have to do, especially at this point in the game, keep the pressure on. But your team needs to react accordingly. And I feel C9 got baited by their vision control. Lemon Nation put on so many wards, he's like, guys, I got this area under control. But the thing is, if you can't defend it, you have to leave it. And sure, you have to sacrifice that vision, but it's the right call. Oh, Peke actually diving in on towards high. Good amount of damage. Actually, DFG was used in there as well. And he's still a constant threat. You know, these last few moments have been a little bit quiet outside of that double kill. 3 0 0 right now. If you look at the AD carries as well, we can see that Reckless farming his way back up to a level pegging in terms of CS. Not got the kills. Three assists to his name. And I'm sure he'd be happy with a couple of kills in there as well. He would be very happy. So has caught out. Meteos going in in this one. Maybe pitting off a little bit more than he can chew. Balls is close by, but so has tried to go for that one. Tiamat was used, but he didn't quite land it close enough. Balls is going to come in, though. Find him in there. So has his force to back away. That's going to give Balls some free farm in that bottom lane. Meanwhile, they're trying to collapse onto Sneaky in this mid lane, but the vision, like you said, Lemonation has managed to give great vision to Cloud9. They're not going to get caught out this time around. The damage on Peke. He has to be so cautious right now. I think he was asleep there almost. We, he's lucky because if Gragas was close, that barrel could have come out, knocked him straight back. And we do see Balls going aggressive onto Soaz in that bottom lane. And that's going to push Balls right up on towards this turret. That's going to be some free damage for him. The yeah, home guards of the blunt coming out can be very deceptive though. You think you have the pressure, but you only have it for so long. Penke is looking for catches. They need to snipe somebody out and then just kill him. Indicating it's a sweeper. He wants to get rid of those wards and catch people off guard. However, C9 is pressuring Fnatic very well right now. Well, it's a 4v4 effectively at the moment because Balls and Soaz are having their own fight off at the side. Meteos is going to come in and invade, and that's going to be a blue buff given across towards high, I believe. So it did transfer in the right direction. And that's a problem for Peke. He needs that cooldown. Another problem for Fnatic right now is that they don't have any sense of hard engage. Sure, Pantheon can drop, but you need people consolidated into an area when you can drop on them. But Bonk, sure, he can pick somebody off. But if she goes in head first, she will get countered. And Zyra has really good disengage. But on engage she lacks because her E is quite slow and her ulti takes two seconds to knock people up. So Fnatic is has been playing very well reactively. But we have to remember all these picks they've made, all these kills they've gotten is basically reacting on mispositions of Cloud9. And Cloud9 in turn is putting the pressure even with a gold deficit, which indicates how how well their comp is is better at, at pressuring than Fnatics. We see the two AD carries, both are farming top and bottom. Sneaky's just gone down, saw himself a giant wave. I think it was like a double or triple wave. He's just got down that bottom wave, which you can see. Is Getting miles ahead in terms of farm. Reckless is keeping the pressure on. Meanwhile, down the bottom and the two top lane as well. They're going to counter and say thanks for all that farm. You just push it back on. 
how do we see these two top laners going? Because Soaz and Balls have been off on their own this time around. They are going to build up. We always say Shivana becomes the stronger force at this level 9, 10, 11 stage. Once the farm starts to turn in their favor, Sneaky's got to be careful. He can't duel out against Soaz just yet. You can see the damage he's pulling out. Has to use the on the hunt to get away from this Dominus of Soaz. But Lemonation's coming in. They're going to try and 2v1 this. Are well, they going to be able to get on towards Soaz though? Dominus, as you said, is going to be popped. There's a good play back. There is a hook landing as well. Soaz now going to get sloped by the box. Actually, not flashes away from that one. And that should keep him in safety as Meteos here. Not sure exactly what happened there, but he went very, very low. There's another look. hook landing on towards Soaz. Rest of Fnatic are starting to clamp around them though. Can they pick up any oh. kills? Grasping Root comes over the side. Spell shield by Sneaky. It's an ear on Oxa Cyanide. He has to flash away. Fail flash on Sneaky. But they are gonna get yellow star. What yeah. on earth is happening? Reckless is coming up. He sees himself multi kills going on here. He's gonna go on towards Sneaky, gets the one shot down. Suez, Suez takes down Medios. That's gonna be another. They're coming on towards High. High goes down. This is all going Reckless's way. They're gonna let him out the kill. And they give a bay a triple kill. It was a four for one trade. It's disaster time for Cloud9. And again, we see Balls in the bot lane pushing on his own. Cloud9 overplaying their hand. Sure, it looks so close, but Fnatic plays it so well. Oh, you got me. No, you don't. Oh, this time. No, you don't. And meanwhile, every time they get somebody low, another full HP member joins the fight, and then they get that guy low. And eventually, Reckl shows up, and he just cleans house. And sure, Balls can capitalize on Adam Butlin, but how much? A tower for a Baron? <laughs> this is a risky Baron, actually. Oh, he's Taking very low. They're going to get it now. Now the Cyanide is there. They're perfectly fine. And actually, you say that every time his Yellow Star just puts himself out there, says, I'm going to be the Patsy. I'm going to be the one that dies. I'm going to put my neck on the line. While the rest of the team, the guys that need the kills, will get them. And giving a vein, 3-0-3. That's not good. And I really like what he does there. And, and you say, like, yeah, Zyra gets caught really easily and blows up really easy, but yeah, Yellow Star is really actually making good use of the Zyra passive right here. Yeah, and the bait coming in there allows them to get so many more kills after you see Reckless now 3 0 3, 3 0 1 on Peke. There's a kill for Soaz, a kill for Cyanide. And overall, that's helped them really start to build things up. You can see that Reckless now alongside that Blade of the Rune King has a Phantom Dancer, got a pickaxe as well in there, and it's sat uh, actually on 160 gold because he just went back and bought them up. Meanwhile, Peke is actually going to challenge for the blue. But looking back at these fights, though, try and imagine what would have happened if Balls was present in those in those 5v4, uh, instead of the 4v5 skirmish, in 5v4, and then it would have been a lot different. And Balls, I think he really needs to start, <laughs> start grouping up with his team. I always like to keep present with my balls, but as it stands, <laughs> if you like, it is being pushed in. Let's we'll see what Fnatic make of this Baron. Keep yourself together, people. Fnatic are in the jungle. They have a wave in that top lane, and Cloud9 are not reacting to this one quick enough. Reckless is pushing straight in towards that top. The rest of the team are going to rotate around. Now they're here, but also the mid lane. You can see Peke and Cyanide are in there. They're keeping the pressure in towards the mid lane. They will clear this top lane out. Reckless getting a shot on balls, and he's already doing some serious, serious damage. The tank taking a thousand hit points hit. So if if an a fetch Ivana is going to jump on any AD carry, Vayne is probably your best bet to play with. As, as well as the reacting going in, he's going to have a hard time catching the Sivir. So both ADs are going to be chased by their respective top laner on the enemy team, but both have the tools to deal with it very well. And I think Zyra is going to get increasingly more important right now. So as Hook team doesn't really care, just slices and dices away because Reckless was one they needed to focus. He manages to get himself some free hits back in the mid lane. Reckless is getting free hits on towards that turret. Both in a turret taking so much damage. Cloud9 seem a little bit lost in which one they should be defending. Yeah, I really think the split push opening up the map is a really good call for Fnatic. Peck has mobile, he can get anywhere. Pantheon's in between the lanes and he can surprise drop behind any of the lanes when Cloud9 split, uh, splits up. And they have to keep winning these fights when they're split. Every fight they've won so far was a 4v5 or a people outnumbering each other. And they, I'm not sure if they can already fight 5v5 because Balls combined with Gragas is going to be really a lot of AoE damage that's coming instantly and Fnatic is just not tanky enough to deal with that just yet. Pressure staying on the turret so we can see that Peke already got this middle in a turret down pretty low. The boomerang coming out from Sneaky will force him to back away some more but he's just going to keep that one up because they have this pressure on the top side of the map with Soaz, with Yellowstar and with Vayner. We are going to see the Mandrop coming in on towards that top turret again. It's still on towards time. He's a gun. No! He does manage to get away but only for so long. Reckless now on a rampage. He gets slowed down, and Cloud9 are chasing back in. Torrent does go down. Cyanide and Soas tanking up all the damage. And we can see that Peke starting to come in around the side, decides against it. This close. was really close. Imagine if High had his explosive cast mm. right there. Very close, close fight there. They do get themselves two 
inner turrets from it. That's not a bad use of Baron Buff, which they got simply off a misplay or misfight from Cloud9 simply getting caught out. So, Fnatic in control right now. 5-4 up in turrets, but more importantly, 9-4 up in kills, and they have a giant gold. 7,000 gold advantage at 25 minutes. Cloud9, is this a mental thing now? Are they starting to get in their own heads and thinking back to the quarterfinals of those World Championships? Yeah, I think I think we see that both teams play pretty well. In terms of vision and pressure, Cloud9 played their composition well. They just went a little bit too far with it, you know? They felt really comfortable, because Fnatic couldn't really reply to it, but that's the nature of Fnatic's composition, and they went a little bit too greedy once or twice, and I've, they have their analyst right here, and he used to work with us back in the day as well, and he's definitely gonna, he's been probably listening to this cast right now, and he's gonna tell them, guys, this is what you did wrong, and they're gonna fix that for the next game, and both teams are showing great understanding of their composition, and as well playing reactively. You saw that, oh yeah, you got my blue buff, I get you Drake, I get your tower, and I get your tower. This is like chain, chain, chain. Really good chain of events for both teams. As a matter of fact, Fnatic is just taking the upper hand right now because they're reacting a little better, but I really like what both teams have been showing. No, Reckless, 4-0-3 now, 212 CS as he continues to utilize the power of this vein, pushing through now towards the inner turret in that bottom lane. And in fact, Cloud9 having to react to this one, moving down pretty much the entire team on towards that inner turret to make sure that they can keep a hold of that one. But we can see that Fnatic already getting those uh, those wards down inside of the Cloud9 jungle. Inner turret in the bottom one is the only turret, uh, the only turret outside the base that still stands Ooh. here. As there's a hook on towards Yellowstar. Are they going to try and capitalize this one? Flash from Yellowstar, but well, that's going to bait the man drop. Knock up there on towards both. Rest of the team coming around. Ultimate pop by his push right in there. So it's in the middle. Meteos is dead. There is the explosive cast coming out. But now Reckless ripping through them. Good damage comes down. In the end, two for one here for Cloud9. Two I, for one. It was only because of the tower, though. I feel that they didn't follow through in that mode because Reckless is getting free farm. He's Starting to get all on his own. Meteos had no chance and went down in seconds the moment Reckless got on him. So this is the way Cloud9 had to play these fights earlier. Shivana goes in, disrupts them. Explosive cast splits them up. And Mad Pops to Lamination. I think he handled, landed three good hooks there in a row. On yeah. Pantheon, on the Zyra, and on another target that I can't recall anymore right now. So but he's, he's, yeah, he's definitely in control of these fights. And that's the way they're going to do it. Drag one out. Kill him if you can. If not, let him go on. Grab the next one and just... Try and split Fnatic up, and you saw what Fnatic was doing earlier to that fight though. They were playing the split push game again. They don't want to face these guys 5v5. Pekka is a really annoying person to play against when he's one again, one on one on your lane. He used to do that with Zeta a lot in the past when we played him, and he was basically introducing us back in the day to split push, and we had no idea how to deal with it because he just drags one or two people to the side, and then Fnatic capitalizes on that on the other side of the map because they're there pushing already. And if you move too many people into one side of the map, they will just take the other side of the map for them. We have just 10 seconds until the Dragon comes up. Cloud9 already in position from that one. And less than a minute even until our second Baron of the game does spawn in. 28 minutes only on the clock from this one. It's going to be a Dragon here as Xpeke does go over the side there. Just spotting that that Dragon has been taken down. So whilst not getting that one, they do have the timer on that next Dragon spawn. Yeah, they got the ward down. Just sneaked across there. Got a peek on it. And actually, if you'd have asked me a minute ago who would have got that dragon, I would have almost certainly said Fnatic. They had it completely locked down until that single team fight. Talisman being used there by Cloud9. That's rushed them down towards that bottom lane. And Fnatic can try and take advantage. They haven't got quite quick enough to get in towards that mid lane, though. But they have position to try and bait out this Baron. And so has finished Guardian Angel. I like that. He can play the, the Darien-esque uh, playstyle right now where he goes in, dies, they huddle up on him and they have to kill him again. Essentially providing enough zone for Reckles in the back line to start hitting people. Because Reckles can kill anybody right now. Usually, AD carries have a lot of issues getting through the tanks, but he's vain. He's a fed vein. He has these items and he's gonna just kill everybody that comes to his path. Now oh. nine trying to bait that one out. They're looking to try and create a play. They know they're going to be pushing in the middle. Man drops coming in. He's not going to land. It's a little too late. Peke coming in there. Yellowstar caught a strangle board. He bounces four members of Cloud9 up in the air. Lemonation dropped in seconds. Explosive cast does dissipate. Fnatic, but so as, as you mentioned, is in there. He's creating all the damage. Barrel lands on towards Reckless pretty quickly. Tumbles straight on towards balls there. And Cloud9 are running for their lives. They have to run away from this one, going so, so very low, losing one man, 80 carry, top lane are both very low. Fnatic just gonna back away here, and this is gonna be a baron for them, carved out of that last team fight. Cloud9 had no vision, had to phase check in there almost to get things going. See, both of these teams are so good at reacting to mistakes from both themselves and other teams, 
Uh, the man drop comes down, misses completely. Normally that would indicate, guys, we failed. Let's wait for that cooldown again. Really good snare into Quadra knockup coming out of uh, out of the Zyra. And then at the same time, Silver ulti gets popped. They try to disengage and they try to disrupt the T-Fight later with an explosive cast. And this is just what happened. You, know, you see four-man snare, four-man knockup. Immediately on the first target, they go, and then Soas flashes in on Sneaky. Sneaky gets zoned out of this fight, but he pops his ulti, shares utility, good cast, resets the fight completely, and Reckles is trying to chase, but he can't chase into a Gragas. So, really good usage of abilities on every team. And Fnatic, because they had the lead, they went out, but they actually made the initial mistake, reacted really well to their mistake, but then Kanan reacted really well to what was going on in the fight as well. So, I like to get props to both teams. Pretty good fight. And you just saw how close Beke was to landing that leech on Sneaky. That would have got himself the kill. May yeah. have even fed straight to another kill onto High, and that could have turned even a bigger advantage. They got the Baron from it nonetheless. It's the second Baron for Fnatic. Well, let's see what they do with it. And this shows again what Soaz did again. He just jumps in, goes for the AD carry. He doesn't care. I'm, I'm renekton. If I can neutralize the enemy AD carry, I'm doing my job. As many people are hitting me, they're not hitting my teammates. And that's that's what Renekton needs to do right now. Because Reckless on Vayne, he's, he's going to clean up. 4-0-5, and in a bit of defense there with the Spectre's Cowl and on top of the Phantom that's the Blade of the Rune King and that last Whisper that he has in there already. We can see pushing again down towards this bottom lane. I mentioned it before, the only turret outside of the base left standing here for Cloud9. Are they going to be forced to give it up against a barroned up Fnatic? Ooh, just a quick dissonance. Catches both Lemonation and Sneaky stood a little too close together there. And they will come in and bully this one out. Explosive cast being used, but clearly trying to just keep that wave at bay. They don't care about that. They're just going to tank it out and take it. And Fnatic get themselves another inner turret. They're going to back now, get fully healed, healed up, push once again with this Baron buff. Yeah, I don't think that was, uh, they were on the right pitch or in the same page. Silver was backing up. Explosive cast come in. They're trying for a catch. Going in towards Meteos. He's going to actually dash out to the ward, but Peke going to dash right into him. There's a stun as well. The least actually Still landed seen. at max range. Can he escape from this one? Peke dives in. A Q will finish off. Peke now on a rampage at 4 0 1. No lease in. 5v4. Baron buff on for Fnatic. Not looking good. Now nine are in trouble here. Fnatic have the bit between their teeth. I thought they were about to back off, but with that Baron buff, once they've managed to make that pick, once there's four members down, they just can peek, keep on pushing. The explosive gas is not available either. They're trying to catch on towards balls. He has to back away. Reckless is given some free farm, some free time. Dominus being used by Soas to tank out that turret. They're going straight in. Cyanide's taking a lot of damage. He's going to go down. They do manage to get that inhibitor turret down. They got Cyanide for the process, but they're going to quickly disengage. There is the Zyra. Yellow Star caught out here. Has hasn't got his ultimate available. Reckless has got to be careful. He doesn't get dived on. Tries to tumble away. Oh, it's so close. No, he flashes away at the last second. But this is a great play from Cloud9. Trying to counter, but they're still losing people. Peke is cleaning house right now. Cloud9 going to chase once again. Meteos does not land the kick. And it means Fnatic will disengage. And this is why these fights are so hard to play because Fnatic rotates for one reason, right? Kask is down. Rotate, which means lure them out of the base, look for a pick. But they're going on Soas. Going in for Soas, but actually Reckless is healed up and there is Peke diving in. High goes low, balls is low. Soas is going to come back out of that GA. Is he going to be able to push through? Here comes Reckless. DFG used by Peke. Meteos is down. Reckless picks up his fifth kill of the game. Completely read that one like the book. It's exactly like you said, you called it. Guardian Angels, they all clump around and Fnatic. Well, it bought the time for Peke's cooldowns to come back and Reckless to get back involved in that one. Fantastic counter and Fnatic are looking strong in game one. I mean, both teams are really trying to do the best they can. They see somebody low and they want to get him and they try to, they know somebody's baiting with that Guardian Angel, but at the same time, they know maybe we can kill him right before he pops, somebody else comes in. But every time this happens on both sides, you get somebody low, somebody else jumps into the fray. Peke is surprised, this uh, Distortion is jumping in as well and he's playing his LeBlanc so well in and out as you need to play because you can't take any damage. But when we go back to the push, I just want to highlight what Fnatic did there. They saw the explosive cast going down, they go for a rotation, they draw Cloud9 out of their base, they look for a catch, and then they try to push down a tower as long as does not have that AoE disruption available, they're going to win that push. At the same time, Cloud9 knows that Fnatic Sphinx is down, and when it's up, almost up, they start playing aggressive again, and you saw middle of that fight, that cast surprised Reckles, and he got hit by it, and he almost died to Elimination Soap, and it was really close. So both these teams are so aware of cooldowns that it dictates their play, but then again, each team knows that of the other team as well, so it's, it's really mind games all over. There is Reckless actually pulling the dragon out, was hit by the hook of Lemonation, who also got himself a ward over the side there, but 
Oh, not quite finishing off. Not quite got the attack speed to uh, deal with that ward in one single go. Fnatic here on top of the Dragon. Cloud9 need that goal as a Q. He's gonna land there from Meteor, so they're gonna go through to get the hook on towards XPK, but Fnatic pick up the Dragon. They're gonna back off. That extends their lead now to 11,000 gold. It was Yellow Star's plant that got that. That explosive cast came in. That was very close to being stolen by Cloud9. And as you mentioned, it's gold that they really need right now. They're hurting for that gold. And finally, with that explosive inhibitor, Fnatic are gonna push. Kai doesn't have that explosive cast for the defense, though. Possibly. Problem coming into this one, that inhibitor, as you said, exposed now. And Fnatic can simply march on through. And Reckless doing all the damage as they hook so as, but he's not the crocodile that you're looking for in that situation. And that surely will mean the first inhibitor of the game as PK does dash in there. Just a little bit of damage off on towards Meteos, who's not really in these later stages of the game been able to have that much of an impact. Banshee. Uh, of Yellow Star was just part, but there is once again Peke diving in. Meteor's going to be forced to back away somewhat. You can see, still see how cautious Fnatic are because they've got that pick comp. They need to get that kill. They haven't managed to get it yet, and they're still fearful that in a straight up 5v5 fight, Cloud9 actually may get the better of them. Yeah, Shivana Gragas is such a dangerous combo to play against, especially on top of that, their side lanes are pushing in. If you make a mistake right now, you can lose like an inhibitor really easy, maybe even a second one. Death timers are pushing quite highly. Dra Baron's about to spawn as well. Um, they're really between a rock and a hard place when they're pushing because they don't want to play that 5v5 game. They want to split them up. But Cloud9 is reading into it. They don't have to defend any sides anymore when their sides are pushing. And only what's open is, is the middle lane for Fnatic. So Cloud9 is saying, well, come at me. And look at Cloud9. They're just surging up that mid lane, making sure they can clear that wave push it back up and buy themselves a little bit of time to try and get in towards that Baron. Sleeping Lens being used by Cloud9 to get themselves the vision. Peke giving up on his own blue because they're not too sure about the situation over at Baron. And Meteor set a little bit out of position. He's going to get back around to the rest of his team. Baron is now live and on the map. Will Fnatic be able to pick that one up again? Pink Ward's already going down, so full vision controls. We are going to see the ultimate out of Sneaky. There is the explosive cast coming in. Oh Peke jukes him, goes straight to the back. Then comes the rest of the team. So as is right in the middle of them. Box goes down from Lemon Nation, but he's already at half HP. Cyanide is the one hammering away on him. So as now on a rampage. Reckless coming from the side. Lemon Nation does get the play down. Has to flash over the wall. Peke is going to fall here towards high. The grasping route not quite connecting. Well, they've got the finisher. Four men down to the one of Fnatic. Peke is a god. Peke is a god. It's not, oh my god, it's oh my Peke. He just pulled off an amazing move with that Laplong. Just completely duped the entire Cloud9 team. That everyone went all in for it. So and then he was suddenly behind them. And they had no idea what happened. From, from a textbook strategy point of view, the right calls made by both teams. We have Baron control, we want to bait it. Cloud9 says, well, you want to bait it? I can't fish it. I will push mid. Save your ulti to rush. But Fnatic wins it again. Nexus turret's going to be focused down the inhibitor taken just before that. And is this going to be game number one going over to Fnatic? Lemon Nation, the only man left alive. And there is a Nexus being focused down. Fnatic go 1 0 up in the best of three here in the Intel Extreme Matters World Championship semi finals. A great start for Fnatic there. They managed to take themselves game one. It is a best of three series, let's not forget, but they did the exact same thing in the quarterfinals at the 2013 World Championships. Cloud9 did manage to strike back. Can they do it again? They will be certainly shocked. They looked so, so solid yesterday. They looked like one of the favorites for this tournament, but Fnatic, they have certainly woke up. Europe has certainly woke up today because Gambit alongside them. I don't think Fnatic, Fnatic looked really good, but I don't think uh, Cloud9 looked that far from solo. No. Apart yeah. from those, those splitting up from balls and overplaying their hand two times in a row, they made the right calls even there in mid. The only call they had left to them was rush out and try and catch somebody, and they came oh so close to catching Xpeke. If it was any other LeBlanc player than Xpeke, well, game could have been a lot different. First blow in this best of three goes over to Fnatic, one step closer to the grand final and Cloud9 gonna have to bounce back. We're gonna head over to the analysis desk though with the guys to break down game one. Thank you very much guys. What an incredible game. Fnatic and Cloud9, they traded blow for blow in the early game. I really feel like for every step that Fnatic made, Cloud9 replied and vice versa. But 
Fnatic got away by the skin of their teeth so many times in those opening 20 minutes. So close, the last tick of Ignite just not taking out Peke. Certain kills in the bottom lane, middle lane, top lane just not going their way. Could have been a very different game, but, 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 Fnatic secure it. Let's start by talking about picks and bans. Silver first pick for uh, Cloud9, Renekton LeBlanc for Fnatic. We talked about how important LeBlanc was for both of these players. Peke's had good games, Hai's had good games. What did you guys think about the rest of picks and bans in the team comps? Well, if you take the first pick, it was 100% the plan for Fnatic to make sure there was a first pick Xavier. So they take Renekton and LeBlanc, instant lock them, and they had the vein pick ready. They already banned away Caitlyn to more or less push Cloud9 onto saying, you need to first pick Sivir, she's the only AD carry left that you actually want to play in this combo, or whatever kind of combo you want to run. So first pick Sivir, and then instant log in, strong top laner, strong mid laner, of course, we saw Peck on LeBlanc, fantastic. And then they just last picked the vein, when they saw the whole combo, it was like, this is perfect for us. Everything was planned for Fnatic when it came to picks and bans. Yeah, the only thing that the Fnatic comes from downside to was the wave clear. With the blank, with the Wayne, they didn't really have any wave clear if C9 started to siege with the Gragas, with the um, Sylvia, which can poke really well. And then you have the Renekton getting outscaled by the Shivana as well. So I was like, okay, if they fall behind early, it's looking for trouble. But they picked up um, a, re a really good fee for one, I think, around the Dragon, while they picked yeah. up the Dragon. But Reckless actually got really fed onto that. Pekka got really fed. And we also have to talk about Pekka killing high, one on one in the mid. Gra Gragas versus LeBlanc. Pekka really stepping up there. It looked like he had trouble in the three matches he had uh, yesterday and today. But this time he's just showing absolute awesome performance. Yeah, I, I want to actually just quickly just throw something in there about Pekka. Even yesterday when he was playing Gragas, uh, going for that Guardian Angel, selling and picking up a DFG, we're seeing Pekka making more aggressive plays. On his LeBlanc in this matchup, he was throwing out that W distortion under towers at the threat of being caught by Threshooks. You yourself were saying that was very brave, jumping, like just getting poked down. And it's a, an ex Pekka that we have not seen for three weeks. He has been very scared, passive, reserved in the LCS. And now all of a sudden, in some of the games that we've seen here at IEM, he is going forward, he is diving yeah. in there, he's trying to make those things happen. I think, we need to, I think we need to highlight as well with the combo, just like Frog and he said, that of course Shivana will outscale Renekton, but if you look at the rest of the combo from Fnatic's side, once you actually get ahead when you have a vein and you have a LeBlanc, pick combos when they get ahead, when you can start split pushing, catching out targets are so strong. And of course they actually scaled really well into the late game with these picks. And also with the fact you have a Pantheon, so if Vayne is split pushing, one or two people comes to kill her, Pantheon can join him with his ultimate, help her out, and it actually meant that the Fnatic combo against this Cloud9, once they got ahead, was just outscaling them. Yeah, it's one of those things we do see time and time again. If you get ahead, you have all the tools to stay ahead. But if you don't, that's the risk. That is the That's the, the risk you take with exactly. the picks. So we do actually have two replays for you guys. I want to call the first replay up onto your screen. It starts at a little after 20 minutes. Let's hit tab, get rid of those items. And the reason we start this a little bit earlier is because it follows the, or it's a precursor to the top lane yeah. fight. So Deficio, talk us through what happened. So what we see here, we didn't actually see on the screen because there was a fight going on in top lane where Swords were being caught out by Elimination and of course by Sneaky. But what happens here in the mid lane is actually that Meteors and High are being caught out by Fnatic. They do really look, we watched the fight here. Sana coming with ultimate, we have the flash snare from Yellowstar and look at Meteors, he's almost dead and High very, very low. And this is where the chase Comes in, actually just be popping this one up again, speed it up a little bit. Now, looking here, they're actually coming up towards this top lane and then we tap it away. Here's the real fight, the one we actually saw with the screen here. And notice also Vayne coming up from the river. She moved away, Shivana has been bot lane ever since, not moved at all. The fight itself, Yellow Star actually missed positions, it comes into the middle of everyone and ends up dying for it. But if you didn't notice the rest of the fight here, it's actually Fnatic more or less baiting it out for Reckless to come because Sneak, I mean Balls, he's still in the bot lane doing absolutely nothing here other than going towards the turret. And Reckless, because he moves all the way up, he gets all the kills there. And when you pick up three kills to a vein at the 21 minute mark, it looks really, really good for you. So that's the end of that replay. The next one was at 36.57, if you want to get that one prepared. I mean, what's your take on that fight? You know, how do you read that? Yeah. So there was actually one point in the fight where I was like, okay, so was got caught out by the hook. He didn't have ultimate. Then he flashes over a wall and Sneaky actually fail flashes after him. Because he fail flashes, it didn't mean that much because he was gonna die to win no matter what, so he would just waste his flash. But Source, he didn't die. He actually sustained himself enough to hunt down Meteos and he got the kill onto Meteos because they didn't finish him in the top lane. 
Yeah, so it works out. Fnatic got away with those fights a few times. I think even if you look at the HP bars, initially, your first thought is, wow, Cloud9's done a lot of damage, they seem to be good, but they just didn't close those kills out. Fnatic found a way to stay alive and avoid being, uh, you know, sent to that death chamber, as it were. Now, the next replay is one which uh, we didn't expect it, because it's about 36 minutes into the game. We did see expect it on LeBlanc. Let's once again pull this replay up onto your screen. And Frog, and I think you want to maybe talk us through this, this juke because you, you started grinning the moment on the hunt yeah. went down from Siva, and you even said you've seen this coming. Yeah. Wait, let us just pause it here. So, so far, up until what happens here is Xpec, he keeps trying to use the W distortion and then the ultimate distortion. Keep trying to poke C9 down, keep trying to maybe W forward, use his Q and ultimate Q so he doesn't have any way to actually escape. So here, he's baiting them by jumping forward into four people while the rest of Fnatic is flanking him, flanking them from the, from the river. And they, let's just play it because what Pekka does is absolutely amazing. He goes instantly back, jumps forward, flashes Hyde's ultimate here, and then he goes back to his ultimate distortion and it jukes the entire team of Cloud9. Now they used everything and you have Cyanide coming in with the perfect man, ult man for an ultimate and then basically just see all of Nasdaq collapsing onto Cloud9. Boss is trying to deal with Reckless, but Reckless is far too fat. And the same with Packet. They're just killing him together. He can't do anything. Meanwhile, Snick, he's caught up off by Yellow Star and Soas. And basically, he can't run away from them because he used the Civil Ultimate to engage. And that's basically just Nasdaq playing absolutely amazing and fantastic dude by Packet. Yeah, really, really good game overall by Fnatic. I think Cloud9. Uh, you know, maybe they just had a few small things go more their way that could have turned out slightly differently. Guys, we do have to go to a very short air break. When we return, game two in this best of three series will be underway, this time with Fnatic on the blue side. Guys, we'll be right back.